nitrous card. you haven't noticed by what you have probably been watching already we are at a street race sometimes you know you just catch a street race you just out driving around getting some milk and bread preparing for bad weather and then all of a sudden you, you find yourself in the middle of a cash days that's not really what happened here uh, actually we have been busting our butts in the shop to get everything ready for this season of craziness and uh Dan and Limpy were putting on an old 
old school OG small tire cash days in DFW. So we decided to get out of the shop, cruise on down to DFW and get some intel on what we want to do here. Like this is what, you know, this is what we're planning on doing more of. If we're gonna jump into the small tire thing and we're gonna do some small tire street racing, then we need to, you know, it's been a long time since I've been out to a legit small tire street race. So we figured that instead of just getting our stuff together and going down to a small tire race and showing up with a car and guns blazing and just trying to take everybody out, we figured uh, it's probably smart for us to just dip our toes in the water. We decided to roll down here, just take it all in in a you know, much more relaxed environment where we can get a feel for it, try and take some notes. You know how I do things. I like to be very weird about it. So take some notes on this, figure out how long they're taking in between rounds, figure out how many spots they end up going to, you know, how many cars, what the general horsepower range is of the cars, how fast we think they are. Being that we haven't been out to a legit small tire race in a long time, you know, we were kind of prepared for just about anything. You know, we've been doing the TV Super Bowl races for so long that we weren't really sure what we were jumping into here. But as you can see from the footage and stuff, and you know, I'm sure, I'm sure you can tell that it was, uh, it was, it was amazing. Like. It's just something about a DFW cash days, you know. I don't know what it is, man. I've been to a lot of races, but man, there's just something about that that Dallas Fort Worth area that just that just sets me on fire. I don't know, man. But we were driving out to the meeting spot, you know, and we were of course we're you know, nervous about all kinds of different things, but but man, when you get there and you know, you start figuring out where you're at and oh I've raced here and oh I've raced here you know and all night last night it was like that and you know it was man it's just that's where it all started you know what I mean you know I went to my first cash days in DFW which was the first cash days my first cash days was the first cash days and so coming back down here man it just all the all of it the sights the sounds the smells the way they do it down here it really hasn't changed much, man. They're they're still doing it. They're still down here getting it. So that part was amazing. It brought back some fond memories, and it really reminded me of you know what I love about about this shit. You know what I mean? You talk about the who's who of small tire street racing in the United States or even the world. Like you talk about Peter Bomb. You talk about Ryan Mitchell, Boosted, Cali Nate, Rank, Hoffman. It was lit. It was it was like the you know the dude you watch on YouTube. Like I hate to say it because it sounds corny, but like you know these are the dudes that I've been watching on YouTube street racing for a while now, and here they are live and in person getting it on and doing their thing. And it was I don't go to races just to watch, so I'm not used to that. But it was kind of freaking amazing just to be able to watch these guys do their thing and watch the crews do their job watch Dan and Limpy do the cash days thing like making sure that security's in place making sure the people are out of the way making sure that the two cars are coming up and you got two cars behind them and two cars are coming back and you make a hole like man it was so awesome it really was I'm kind of anticipating that tonight's gonna be even crazier and it's gonna be even faster and you know we're gonna see some probably judging by the people that are left in there's gonna be some intense matchups and big you know big races go down that I wouldn't normally get to see in person so I'm really excited about that but you know and then we also just want to see if tonight shakes out like last night you know it's a two-day event so you can't judge everything off the first night so you can't just take all your notes and then go home you know you gotta stick around and, and do it once more I'm hoping that you know since it's the second night now guys have got through first round they got that out of the way they got their strategy strategic pass down and now they're going into second third round and now they're going into the second night and man now you know they're going to be swinging for the fences and laying down everything they got and because they're going up against you know the biggest names that are left so 
tonight's gonna be uh, pretty insane and I'm super excited about it I'm sorry that there isn't a bunch of in-between ground stuff you know but like you know we're just gonna kind of let you guys experience the way we experience it which is you watch the whole round the whole night play out and then we'll talk about it later you know because that's we don't really have time in street racing to you know sit down and talk about everything with everybody so well and i honestly don't think i got all of the passes and then also there's uh 1320 and um, yeah that's the other thing is this is our first one in a long time we don't want these people to think and we don't want anyone to think that because this you know that we're out here to cover the race or that that's what we're going to do or we're going to be putting you know putting out videos that cover street races or whatever that's not us at all so we're just trying to bring along our fans and our subscribers and our viewers with us to what we do so so you know you're not gonna we're not gonna give you some big 1320 video because there's everybody's here 1320s here Kyle Loftus you know 660 videos they're all here Stephanie Johnson they're, they're all here so you know we'll let them do that part of it if you want to catch up on every round and every pass and every name and, and drivers meeting and all that Go watch their videos go check out their stuff because they they got all of it but this is just our side of it so sit back and let's get through the second night of og small tire cash days in dfw <laughs> Okay, so Cali Nate is gonna race quiet. It sounds like I'm telling you to be quiet. Quiet! <laughs> Cali Nate is gonna race the Nova that's called Quiet or has Quiet on the hood anyway from Utah for $5,000, but they don't wanna do it here. They're gonna go across the street to the other spot that's uh, better but virgin or better but worse or worse but better. I don't know. Either way. They're going over there. We're gonna go over there so that we can watch it. It's a bonus race, and we're gonna. Oh, there it's all right. We're, don't mind us. We're new. We're new. Oh boy. We're the new street race spectators. DFW did not disappoint. Big thanks to Dan and Limpy for putting all this on. Thanks to all the security guys for making it possible. Thanks to the racers for putting on a hell of a show. We're headed back to Oklahoma City with a whole new game plan. It's kind of the same game plan, but we do have notes. 
we we learned a he few said things. a whole new game plan and he said kind of the same but yeah <laughs> yeah it's the same whole new same. whole new game plan but you know kind of the same really i mean you know it's kind of the same game plan but we do we do have kinda some kind of same yeah kind of new kind of same but we do you know new but the same same but different you know but we do have some no we have some things that we want we do want to work on because there were some things that we had forgot about this stuff and then there were some things that you know maybe are a little different than what we're used to you definitely want to make sure that like that your car can make it i saw so man the wind is getting bad i saw so many losses in the first round just due to poor communication between driver and crew and staging procedure you know not backing up in their marks not knowing where they're at not knowing what they're doing uh i saw some guys that just didn't make it to the starting line because you know they don't mess around dude this this deal they do not mess around so you got two minutes when the other guy gets up there after the two cars in front of you go down it's 10 or 15 minutes before it's your turn and then if the other guy's there you got a two minute warning if you don't make it they're moving on and a lot of the guys just didn't figure they were going to make it so they said ah we're broke let them have it they gave the guy the round and then or they were you know they made it up there barely and then forgot a bunch of stuff so we noticed a lot of just missed opportunities and then we noticed a lot of guys just flat got lucky you know i mean beater bomb dude he didn't even get to make the hit but they but you know whatever little thing they were dealing with you know whether they smoked the tires or whatever like even ryan mitchell said that he didn't have a good first couple of passes and pedaled it and had to gather it up and stuff so you know but he got a decent enough draw that he got by that round and you know and that gave him what he needed to obviously to go right on through to victory but um also you know lanes man man you forget that when you're you forget that just forget it like when you're doing what we do you know every once in a while yeah the lanes are a little different but man for the most part it's all pretty pretty close but when you're racing in cash days in dfw you know you're gonna go you could go to a spot that's completely bare you could go to a spot that they've been testing at racing at and if it, everybody knows that in the real street if it's a two-lane road Everybody tests in the right lane, so the right lane's beat up, you know, so the lane deal was, there were guys, a lot of the guys were bitching about lane, that's one thing that, but it was also the guys that lost, but a lot of the guys were bitching about the difference between lanes. I absolutely hate it when the lanes aren't close to even, you know what I mean, or when there's something in one lane that just makes it to where you can't make it up, you know, it's different if like one lane isn't good on the starting line, but then it's really good out the back, or one lane has a bump, but it, the other lane is really good, you know, starting line whatever like something usually offsets it but man when it's just uh basically a five thousand dollar coin flip every round you know because you know it's four tenths different between the lanes like those guys are saying like when it's like that man it's rough that is that is tough but that's why you do these often you know and that's what beater bomb and those guys do they do these often so when you get the one that the lanes matter well then you go on and you, you try and get down through there and i did see some wins out of the bad lane too so you know it's not all lost but mm -hmm. but it's definitely better of course when it's even but that's what's so great about street racing is you can't come from wherever and have the fastest car and know you're going to win because you're going to be faster than everybody every round you come down and you know to dfw wherever on the street and you got to deal with lanes you got to deal with spot changes you know you could be the last guy in the round on this spot and then they have to change spots because the cops show up and then you're the first guy at the worst spot on the next one you know so you have to be ready for anything and i feel like you know it came down to the guy that was ready for anything you know yeah i'm, I'm, I'm talking, talking about the end <laughs> I thought you could go in 20 mile an hour on the highway getting uh, off an exit. Well, I don't know why they're honking at me though. I'm just trying to cruise around and do a video before we get some fuel. And then the, the oh, oh, Mercedes 405. 405. Texas uh, is aggressive. Yeah, they don't fuck around. Texas, you go 20 on the highway here, they honk at you. From miles away, I couldn't even see the guy honking at me. Wow. It's full of concrete down here, man. You ain't want it. 
uh, it was amazing. It was it was epic, you know, for us anyway. I'm sure I was the noob, you know. It was uh, it was pretty crazy because I was the guy standing in everybody's way on the starting line, and I was the guy making a video, making videos <laughs> on my phone. I was I was like this. I had my phone. I was, trying to hold it above everybody you know i'm trying to do this on my phone and then i'm like video on here and video on there and i'm getting in everybody's way i was that guy this is the longest red light of my life and i was happy to be that guy to be honest with you so uh on the right side of the road yeah this motherfucker behind me just hurry man he's trying to get the fuck wherever he's going oh nope he's going that way okay he's trying to go to his job probably in his that time um, all the sights, sounds, everything was on point. Cash days. It was, uh, it was, man, it's that feeling that you just can't get rid of, you know. And if you haven't done it, I would suggest go do that. But I'm not suggesting that you go do anything illegal, you know what I'm saying? Never. Like, Find you one of them legal yeah, ones. Go down to Agua Escalientes, Mexico. Do it down there where it's legal. Um, but it was, I mean, we got to see Ryan Mitchell and Peter Baum race. And I got to see the butt hurt bar in person, live. Yeah. Man, that thing is, uh. Large. It's out there. They be talking about your wing. They ain't even seen that thing. <laughs> oh, man. Your wing don't got shit on that wow. one. And I love how Limpy just keeps it OG and Dan just don't care, like. They let in all-wheel drive, they let in diesels, they let in, uh, oh my God. What? Oh, I thought that was the end of it. No, they're just building stuff over here. Um, they let in anything, you know, 29.5, anything goes, man. This, it, you can see a tube chassis car down here, race a stock suspension car, back half cars, racing every damn thing. All in all, it was a great success. They got the race done, the winner got paid. And then we even got to see a five thousand dollars. That blows my mind. It was three hundred to enter or something crazy. And then after the race, Callie Nate and the dude from Utah racing for five grand. I mean, that was you know that was insane. It was awesome. We had a great time and we learned a lot. You know, we we got some notes. We they're running these cars often, so. Yeah, somebody is going to have to work on their time management skills. And yeah. yeah. Apparently it, not to start the race, though. You can be, from what I can tell, it's still the same. You can be an hour late to cash days, and they'll wait for you. But after the first round starts, after two cars go, you got two minutes. And you better not get lost when them cops come. You better no. make it to the next spot and be up there in two the, minutes. Because the guy you're racing gets there and knows his way around and gets there before you and unloads and gets up there. They're going to start the timer on you. It's like tag for adults, you know? <laughs> <laughs> there was adults out there? I didn't see no adults oh. out there. We do have to, uh, you know, do a few things to the cars to make sure that we can turn them around a lot faster than what we're used to. But, you know, this is the place where having three, four, five different tune-ups loaded, you know, because what you see is the guys who are winning this stuff, they're, they're working on the cars, but you just don't see them a whole lot in the laptop. It's... You know, they, they are so finely tuned in this deal that they have tune-ups that they know work on different stuff and they got them ready and they're basically watching the road and watching the cars going in front of them to make sure they know what they need to do to the car. So they'll get they'll get a game plan watching the two cars in front of them or two cars ahead of them and then they go back and they're adjusting shocks and, you know, tire pressure or whatever, but you don't see them doing a whole lot of lap topping. They got that stuff figured out. So that's going to be something that I have to work on. Good um, thing we got a carburetor. The good four thing, of them. The, the, good <laughs> thing, the, good, <laughs> the good thing about, yeah, the good thing about your combo is you're carbureted, so. And your combo is. Yeah, there's a whole, there's not a whole lot of laptop <laughs> left anyway. I will say that the all-wheel drive thing is sketchy. Yeah, I'm still not a fan. I know that the I know that it's all just of not the, fair. I know all wheel drive. <laughs> I know that all wheel drive is a big thing on the internet right now. Everybody's talking about it, bitching about it, whatever. Don't always other all wheel drive guys. And you are you're literally for it or you're against it, and you like you either are totally cool with it or you hate its guts, and that's 
That's kind of yeah. I know you do, but I have always kind of been like, look, man, all the drivers showed up through the years over and over and over again and never done a damn thing. Like literally, I mean, they never they're won figuring shit. The damn thing out. But dude, that truck when it pulled up, I was like. Pfft. Where are you going with this thing? Where is he going? I Fucking he was, nowhere. I was expecting like, the trailer after it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> he just thought somebody put that ugly wrap on their truck. They said he had a new crew or whatever. And yeah, they were they were having a rough time of it. But it was pretty funny that he was not even in his marks or pointing straight there. They were just like, back him in his marks? No, we don't need to do all that. We just point him down range and send it. He, he does the rest of it. Down range. <laughs> Uh, it was uh, it was pretty wild, man. I, I mean, I thought he might have something for old Peter Bomber for a second, but old Peter Bomber for a second. But. I heard many opinions that I'm wasting my time because I don't have a Turbo LS. I heard a few comments, you know, a lot of people were like, "What do you think these small tire cars have got way fast, huh?" And yes, they have. They're extremely fast, but. You know, it's still, you still got a 10 and a half inch tire and you're trying to put it down on the same street. Small tire has gotten faster, sure. I mean, I remember when a 550 car was insane fast 10, 15 years ago, but now the 550 car may not be so fast, but the ETs haven't grown a lot. You know, it's just the technology on the car. Whereas like big tire, it was the same 550s and big tire was fast and now you got to run a second and a half faster than that. So I don't know. I don't want to be the guy who's like, we can beat those guys or they're not that fast, you know, because that's ridiculous when you're talking about the fastest guys in the world that do this. But, you know, it just, uh, there's a few things that I saw out there that I think I can do better than some of those guys, you know. It might just be me being cocky, but I think I can do better than some of them. I think there's some of them that are going to do better than me, but, oh. As we were talking and I was, you know, getting into my thoughts there, I stopped at a red light and I was just sitting at a red light and it was green as hell. <laughs> and uh, I looked behind me and there was a cop behind me at the red light, so I had to and get And he honked at you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we've been at street racing for two days, well, watching, spectating a street race for two days and uh, leave it up to me that on the way home, I'm sitting at a red light while it's green at five in the morning and the cop is behind me and he honks like, <laughs> like he's so, he's, <laughs> God dang, but yeah. So we will, uh, we'll probably end it on that. And, uh, and I turned the wrong way because I didn't know which way to go. So now I'm out here in the middle of freaking nowhere. So I gotta get my way back to the highway. But thank you guys for going along with us on that little uh, field trip. Field trips are good. Sometimes you gotta get out of the shop. You know, sometimes you gotta, Get your get your feet in the streets and wash the wash the evil off of you. So we uh, we are excited and uh, hopefully very soon you will watch us on all those people's videos. Is that him? That one. You'll watch us on all those videos, street racing with all those guys. Sounds weird because a lot of people say that about us. You'll watch us one day. You'll see us racing street outlaws. Now I'm saying one day you'll see me racing Brian Mitchell and Peter Brown. <laughs> <laughs> I did see the greatest meme ever. What? That said, Boosted GT is winning races in the street with the yellow car. Mm-hmm. Wimpy is flagging OG cash days in the street in DFW. Mm -hmm. And Big Chief is building a small tire nitrous car. And mm -hmm. I said, what year is it? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like the Jumanji guy, you know? <laughs> but anyway yeah that's what we're doing so all right well thanks for going along with us on this journey hopefully you enjoyed it we sure did and if you didn't well you know it, it can't all be diamonds who's that they racing vroom, vroom, you wanna race we just got we just can't catch these i'm gonna race we're gonna put sally in the winter circle probably not but probably break it and then i'll be able to get home